emotional maturity. What the hell is that, right? And how do you know if not only do you have emotional maturity, but does the partner that you're attracted to dating, maybe even already with, are they emotionally mature? Because if you don't have a certain level of emotional maturity, your relationship is gonna be hell. We are seeing this in live form in this crazy spectacle of poor Amber Heard and quite frankly, poor Johnny Depp, poor both of them. Um, but that is an example of two wounded people who haven't healed their wounds, basically destroying themselves uh, as the public watches and each other. Um, but you know, we can talk about that because that is a good example of emotional immaturity that is always grown from um, early wounds that just haven't been faced or healed or attended to adequately. Uh, because the truth is everyone is emotionally immature sometimes or a lot of times, none of us are perfect. But I have a friend coming in. Yeah, there she is. Hey, Andrea. Hi, Hi Laura. Hi, everybody. Andrea Kane is um, a really dear friend, first of all, what has been over a decade. Uh, we've been fellow spiritual seekers and really close friends and holding each out accountable and geeking out over all the quantum craziness. And she was there for the beginning, right? When quantum love was just definitely I read an early draft and was so moved. And we're also recovering codependence, which I think yes. is important for this conversation. That's very important for this conversation. So I was saying to them as, as you were join, about to join us, Andrea, that none of us are emotionally mature all the time, right? We're gonna talk about, and you can help me talk about really what I mean by emotional maturity, which is really the absence of certain things, right? More, right. <laughs> more than the presence of, or can be seen, emotionally immaturity yeah. can be seen in the absence of certain things, sometimes in the presence of certain things as well. Um, but also, you know, just because it's very timely, um, you know, I, I was saying that I think this Amber Heard, Johnny Depp situation yeah. is a perfect heartbreaking example mm -hmm. of two people whose wounds are running, have been running their lives and their wounds are just, you know, both of them. And it's not like they haven't done, try, you know, she talks about her therapist or whatever, but clearly, I mean, no fault. I'm not blaming her therapist. I don't even know who she is, but you know, both of them really have some deep, they talked about their deep childhood wounds. Um, Amber had an alcoholic uh, addicted father. Johnny had an abusive, unstable mother, that's probably the tip of the iceberg. But the point is, and I've done a lot of videos on how, you know, what it's like to have an emotionally mature parent, right? Or a mentally ill parent or an addicted parent, how those wounds and are, and this happens over generations, right? And then the trauma kind of gets passed on in many cases genetically, but in many cases, emotionally and behaviorally by continuing the trauma or the criticism or the abuse or whatever it is. And so I think it's important to say that just from the get go that any emotional immaturity out there doesn't come from a bad place, it right. comes from a no. wounded place. Right, just like in the book, The Drama with the Gifted Child, mm -hmm. there are many of us as children, we had parents and again, I, it's not intentional at all, but it's the fear-based parenting. And we kind of grew up trying to anticipate their needs and filling their holes. And that's just, it's not healthy for us as growing children. And it's not healthy in adult um, relationships either. You know, I certainly could wax philosophical about this, but I want to hear from you. By the way, Andrea's book, which just recently came out, is called, um, I have it here, but I don't want to get off it's, my seat. Do you have one there? Kick, yeah, Kicking Ass in a Corset. Uh, Jane Austen, Six Principles for Living and Leading from the Inside Out. You don't need to be a Jane Austen fan, but it really <laughs> is all about how we need to kind of complete our own circuit. So and you, you know, we say that all the time and it's yeah. kind of hand for us. Like sometimes you'll say to me, you know, uh, just remember you've got, right? Like we know what that means, but for the, for your average person, like let's describe what we mean when we say you have to be able to close your own circuit. It means that we, and this I think is the emotional immaturity that we're, 
we've all been working on and you and I've been working on with all the women's groups we're in, instead of plugging in to the outside world, to a lover, to a colleague, to work, to our kids, in order to feel valued, in order to feel worthy, in or order safe. to feel safe, in order to feel complete. I mean, we all love Jerry Maguire, but I do think that phrase, you complete me, does a lot of damage. <laughs> we need to be able to kind of complete ourselves and not, you know, have that vampiric emotional energy, please, you know, love me so I will be well. And instead of you just being a supporting character in everyone else's movie, you really need to star in your life and be with yourself. Let's just kind of start listing some of the common red flags, right? In your, if you are dating someone, just starting to date someone, maybe already with someone, right? And you're wondering about this. One of the key qualities that you'll see is that they um, can't self-soothe, right? So right. people who are emotionally immature often struggle because they never learned and were raised by people who didn't know how to soothe themselves. So they look for safety, meaning they need that validation. They need someone else to take care of them. They, need, they can't sort of solve problems on their own. They can't be by themselves. Right. They can't tolerate anxiety or anger. So they will either completely shut down and like become super stoic and disassociated from themselves so they're not really available to you or they will fly into rages that don't make any sense or they will completely shut down in a depressive way or they will turn to substances um you know like addiction and alcohol right anytime there's active addiction and i'm not talking about people who are in their recovery doing their work i mean people in active addiction every one of them qualifies as an emotionally immature partner uh, that doesn't mean you can't have a beautiful relationship with someone in recovery. In fact, often those people are more emotionally mature than yes, anyone because they grew. Really They're so aware and yeah. I would just add to that one too, Laura. If if you feel like you are the emotional thermostat, someone else's well-being or happiness is dependent on you, or if your partner is having a bad day but you're having success. You feel like you can't share who you are with them because mm -hmm. you it's have to all kind about, of keep yourself small, right? or keep your about, excitement low. I, I would say another red flag is when someone does not want you to spend time with your friends mm -hmm. or your work colleagues or your kids or do things on your own. Right. And they they're jealous. They're needy. They need to be with you all the time. And they'll sort of sabotage your relationships by saying mean things or kind of trying to turn yeah. your, you against or say your friends don't really care about you or they will make it a relationship issue or they'll just pout and withdraw in a more more right. passive aggressive way. You know, people express this in lots of different ways based on their families, their role in their families and their personality. Like I would have been that person that did it more, you know, under the surface, more subtly, <laughs> right, exactly. directly, right? Another person would be like, you know, nasty about it. You know, I might have given you the silent treatment, sort of, or just been really distant, right? Where, where someone else might, you know, shame you or, or tell you you're not a good partner and be really overt about it. But if someone doesn't respect your other relationships. I'm not talking about relationships that really threaten your love relationship, like, you know, with a past lover or with someone you're potentially romantically involved with or someone who's really toxic to you in your life. But in general, you're absolutely, she's absolutely right. You should not be uh, being isolated. And also uh, along those lines, respecting your boundaries, right? So the, the, not only the no, but the yes. That means respecting your boundaries during an argument when things are feeling out of control and you need to say, listen, let's cool off, let's calm down. I don't like the way you're talking to me. Or even boundaries when you're first dating. Totally. And I think sometimes, I mean, I know for me as a recovering codependent, I went for years without having any boundaries. Yeah. So part of my work was to learn what do I feel comfortable with? What do I want? What do I need? And to really work on, 
you know, understanding those boundaries and then really holding firm and not being afraid to like lose a relationship, lose a friendship, lose someone I'm dating with because I'm enforcing boundaries. Because if that relationship is contingent on you not having boundaries, it's not a relationship, right. it's enmeshment, which you again is not gonna lead to a true connection. Did you guys hear that? The difference between healthy connection and enmeshment. Enmeshment is you can't have your own needs or you're gonna lose that person. The relationship is at risk, either real or imagined, because that other person, I mean, this would happen with me and my husband. A lot of times I was projecting things onto him because of my childhood and my past relationships, think, you know, that he was gonna have a problem with something. And then when I finally got to the point where I was asking him about it or checking, he'd be like, no, I don't have a problem with that. You know, so sometimes it's in your imagination. Yeah. But if that other person needs to enmesh with you, right? Um, and you, they're not, you're not okay if they're not okay and they're not okay if you're not okay, then you're running into emotional immaturity um, issues. You know, I always say, and I, I feel more strongly about this than ever before, that I don't want to, you know, and it's the same thing for dating. If I were single, I would say, I don't want to date anyone, but I don't want to work with anyone or hang out with anyone or really be close to anyone who isn't willing to be friends with their shadows, Right. And what I mean by that is those parts of ourselves that they don't need to tell me all about it. I mean, I'm happy to hear it, but they just have to be friends with them. They have to be aware of their insecurities, of their hitches, of their hang ups and taking responsibility for those. So it doesn't mean that someone you date who has these struggles, you should run the other way. How conscious are they of it? How much are they willing to work on it? It's not enough to just say, oh, yeah, I'm working on it. I see what you're saying. That can be a manipulation if they don't actually do anything about it, right? And how much are they willing and how much are they growing, right? What else that, did you say? That's so good. And, and along with that, Laura, I think it's really important to be able to say, you know what? This makes me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know what? This is what I need please give me some space. Or when you said this, you know, I think if you can't have those constructive discussions, then that's also a red flag. And I, how would you say you heal those wounds underneath these kinds of behaviors? How do you heal those wounds and heal the wounded child? Oh, that's so good. I know you have a lot of thoughts, Laura, but I have to tell you, I've been thinking about a lot of my past relationships with parents and step parents and, you know, my first marriage and other things. And I was reading this Thich Nhat Hanh book and he talked about seeing people who've trespassed on you as like five-year-old children. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing a lot of work on having compassion for their inner wounded children and my own, but at the same time, having new boundaries with these people, you know, which yeah. again can seem like a paradox, but I'm not angry. I don't resent, but I have really good boundaries right. now. So I'm not participating in the same dynamic. That's so powerful. So you can have compassion for the why, but that. Yeah mean that you put up with it. Thank you so much for joining mm -hmm. us. And of course, Andrea, I love you to pieces. I'm going to oh, I love you, Laura, and love everybody out there. Thank you so much for letting me participate. Of course. I love talking to you.